Okay, go. Suddenly, this gets a lot harder. <laughs> go. Oh, it's going. Shit. Oh, sorry. Openings. Okay. <laughs> Openings. So, hello and welcome everybody watching. Tonight, we're going to be starting something. Uh, session zero is for characters for an idea we spit around on a couple of previous streams. A D&D &D styled in Borderlands. We'll be playing in the setting, the world. I'm excited to do it. So that's the first one. It will be a little bit before we get to the main one, but bear with us. And with that, I think we should get moving in. So, we're back again for more. Today we question, do you believe in fate? Two strings tied together, a couple of simple decisions, reacting explosively and causing ripples. Standard everyday lives being demanded the extraordinary. Well, buckle your seatbelts, because here we go. It's not like waiting for you. And we zoom in to a planet. We zoom in to a very large city with heavy urbanization. We zoom in to Promethea. Several stories of buildings, highways and roads stacked up on each other, bustling with traffic and activity. Getting a bit later in the day, it's probably about mid-afternoon. Rain coming down decently heavy, making it darker than it should be. And we're going to scoot in a bit closer to an apartment. In that apartment, probably in the middle of a game or something of the sorts. Thaddeus, would you like to describe your character? Thaddeus? Apparently, no, he would not. <laughs> That's what I was like. Oh, God, did he <laughs> rebuke? Did he rebel? <sighs> I really need to stop muting myself. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Let's say this again. <laughs> I'm standing oh, around no. five two ish. Have shorts, uh, dirty blonde hair currently, and the low bob format shape, you know, style. I am female, of course. Name is Crystal. Just light blue eyes. How much more do I need to describe? Probably in some uh... casual. If I'm sitting sitting around playing games, I'm just curious. What would your apartment look like? You have a decent pay. Just this level of money. What would your like? apartment look like? It'd be stocked full of all gaming merch. So different um, figurines, different posters, different everything from my favorite games. It relatively on the messy side as well, as in, I really don't want to get up and do anything clothes else. Plate, like clothes places, old food wrappers, that kind of thing? Not old food wrappers, but clothes places, uh, things knocked over, things just chaotically in a mess. Probably currently a stack of empty energy drinks from your whatever gaming binge you've been on. Most likely, yes. Okay. As you're sitting there, um... Over your Echo Net that you have, you get a message coming through. Uh, it's your your boss at work saying, uh, hey, you're getting called in. Uh, meet here. You have an hour and a half. Get in. Get ready. This is coming down from up top. You need to take it serious today. Thank you, sir. Um... It's just a message. That was just me reading it off for you. It's just like a text. How far am I from? You know, uh, you're maybe, you, got, you got pretty close to the offices. You're maybe like a 20 minute walk. You can get a cab and cut it down to like five or 10, between like five and 10. Got about an hour and 10 minutes left. Yeah. I'm still gonna go back to my game. That's fair. 
All right, so you get your game, keep playing. You beat some punk ass kids trying to one up you. You ain't letting that happen right now. Getting close to time. You start getting ready, getting geared up. They said, bring your A game. I assume you'd take it somewhat serious. Some degree, most likely. That leaves a not good for compression. Good impression. Indeed. As you're getting ready to lock up for the day, your eyes can't help but linger over on your figurines. A couple of like really iconic ones that stories and games have been made after chasing things of myth and legend and vaults. You don't know why, but today they just linger on there for a few minutes and you just feel like butterflies stirring in your stomach. Then you lock your door and you start walking. It is raining. You might catch a cab. That's up to you. Catch a cab because he wants to walk. Fair. I mean, you've lived in the city a while. You lived at this branch. Flag one down, get there easy enough. But we're going to rewind time just a little bit. Zoom out. And then zoom back in. Not too far off. Into a hotel room. Of, I'll let you decide how, how well you would uh, sleep there, how well your stays would be, Eric. What do you think? CD, rich, middling? Middling to lower, I'd say. <clears throat> okay, so zoom in, and probably not your best motel or hotel anything. It's one of those just standard ones you see, it's just like the little U there, and they're like, it's the. It's just like the fountain side motel for the big uh, statuesque fountain in the middle of the square. You also get an alert from one of your contacts saying, hey, you got a decent paying job from Anshin for not a lot of difficulty, at least not on paper. You interested? I'm going to assume this one's also just a message and there's not a person yes. waiting for the respond. Okay. No, this is a message. Okay. Right. Bertram will... Describe your character. I'm getting to it, man. Can I get the mount? Go for it. Bertram will kind of sit up and make himself mentally ready to deal with things. Look it over. Yeah, okay. Send back a message for further details and, like, begin the process of confirm confirming it. Right. Bertram um, the is a... He's a pretty well built individual on the taller side adult male uh a light beard longer like dark brown hair if anyone cares about eye color sure let's make it gray <laughs> all right so, you ask for some details, you get it, uh, you're working for an engine, it shouldn't be a hard day work, if it all goes well, you'd be back in the morning, done, and you'd be quite a bit wealthier. This is a $15,000 contract. Which might raise some suspicions for you, because on paper it does not seem anywhere near the difficulty that price should demand. Well, on paper, is it just, like, a difficult tracking job or something? On paper, it's you're hired on as a contingency in case something goes wrong. Right. It seems to be a courier mission with if something goes wrong, you're supposed to find it and get it back. And they want you on site so you can be fresh and going immediately. All right. Once he has all the necessary information, he'll go grab his dark worn traveling cloak. Get it on over his hardened leather armor. Make sure he's got his gun. And also his melee and physical defense formats. Alright. We'll head to where we need to you be. You have a little bit of... Head to where you need to be. Alright. So we zoom back out. Again, it's raining. Correct me if I'm wrong. Bertram sounds like the kind of guy to just walk. From how you're describing That's him. That's why I have a hood. Exactly. 
So you start walking. It'll take you a bit longer. You're about 40-ish minutes off. But we reconvene on the same time. You and Crystal. Well, Crystal, you're probably there first. You file on in. You get through security. They lead you to one of the like debriefing rooms. It's just a series of chairs on a t and tables to sit at. Anyone uh, walking in, in the room? huh? Go ahead. As they walking in, there's a number of people there already, and you see a lot of uh, people you recognize from the company and a couple mercs and freelancers. Uh, most of them are heavily kitted out, but you also know your idea of heavily kitted out is pretty standard for a more like guard point kind of uh, job, whereas here is a lot more lighter with your profession. There's a number of them getting in, getting ready, getting settled. Nobody that would be of import yet. But they said meet up here. Oh, I'm here. Um, I don't have to be mentally here, however, so I guess I'll find a corner. Hello? Do we have tech pads or something? Echo net? I mean, you have the echo net. You have one of the echo net recorders, so you could probably play something on it. Yeah, yeah, I'm trying to find some more beginning. Oh, okay. Yeah, a little like. Black pressure. Okay. Um, about 15, 20 ish minutes later, you see a individual that was just described walking in. Looking a little wet. Maybe they walked in, walked out here, wherever they were from. Distinctively different than a lot of what's around you. Uh, seems a bit more lighter equipped, so that might stand out a bit. And you haven't seen them around here much, but you've probably at least heard of them. Perhaps by name or by rumor. Hmm. Bertram, you walk into this room, seeing mostly like i said before heavier kitted out groups of individuals getting ready most of them grouping up chalking a couple of them doing the full jock thing head button or shaking hands or the macho stuff uh this one that stands out is i guess over in the corner separated a bit it looks like to be just playing a game minding their own business there but a lot quieter a lot more peaceful than what's happening around them Bertram's just going to go find somewhere to sit and wait. Okay. You sit there and wait. It'll be about, no, 30 minutes or so. You know how companies get and jobs get. Sometimes they tell you to be here by then, but they can't even bother to show up by then. They always have some excuse or some meeting that ran late. That's why he's sitting and waiting. Uh, and then walking in, you'd recognize them. Uh, not nothing unique. A bit overweight. Have the standard like slacks and button-up shirt. Bit of a tie. Running a bit walking in. It's your manager for Crystal. At least your standard go-to who handles your jobs, passes you out, says this is when you need to show up, your payment, and the like. And he hurries in. He gets this, and he just like clears his throat and says, <clears throat> "Everybody." Uh, you Everybody here for the uh, the carrier job that was sent out? There's probably a number of murmurs and agreements. He's like, okay, who's in the right room? Uh, just they're on their way there. Maybe five minutes. Your debriefing will occur, and that'll come off odd to you, Crystal, because this is the guy who normally tells you what you're doing. He's like, and you know what's up, what the mission is. He's like, so just, just a little bit more patience, they'll be in, and we'll get started right, pretty quickly, though, everybody, I, I do suggest being on your best behavior today. Did he get some jeers and, like, mocking from the crowd a little bit? Freelancers and mercenaries, guard people, they're not necessarily the most professional of people in this universe. Continues for a few minutes. Before long, walking in, who immediately catches attention as a very large, imposing, uh, very obviously bardy guard with how they're set up with their equipment. They have, like, you can see 
easily crystal like three different concealed weapons on this man. He's got the bald, he's got his sunglasses on, which is really fucking confusing, because why the hell do they need sunglasses when it's goddamn raining out? <laughs> but that catches a little bit of attention. And who walks in next? Walking in next causes a huge hush of anybody that actually works for Anshin normally and the smarter freelancers. Walking in next, moderate height, fairly uh, slim build, wearing a very form fitting, nice suit, slicked back, kind of pretty short hair. A lot of purplish, like uh, like a darker black suit, like I said, of that with a like purple hints and highlights of things of like the nail, her nails, her tie, a little bit like the mascara and all that. And in walks a uh, lady you're very familiar with, Bertram. I'd like you to make a history check to see if you actually paid attention to them. Sure. You likely would have. Five. Five. Okay, you strong. don't know who they are. You don't know who they are, but you can tell they're important, whoever they are, because half the room just shut up and started paying attention. Crystal, you know who this is. This is... This is one of the big wigs, one of the big head honchos. This is the second in command of Anshin's corporations. This is Murmur walking in. She's got a kind of a hard-set face on her. She's very, uh... very malicious outlook a lot of times <laughs> at least for facial expression wise it looks like she's in on a nasty secret that you don't want her to know and you're all worried of what she has walking in clicking he was clicking on the ground she walks up to the front of it and the guy shuffles off to the side and very out of the way does not want to be bothering her so all of you are gathered yeah, here we have a job proposition for all of you, which you should at least have the basic understanding of. We have a package. We want delivered across a decent chunk of the city. It'll be a long drive. You'll be in this caravan for the better part of eight hours. Most of you are simply here to his guards. Standard duty. Keep anything off. Keep it going. Don't let anybody stop you. She's looking across the crowd to see it, and she's definitely she's gotten like again like a lot of attention. Some of her paying attention. You will be paid very well at the end of this. Then he's gonna turn, and she's gonna turn and look over towards you two. He's gonna look down at her, uh, look at like looking for information, basically off her very kind of bad. Bertram and Crystal, I believe. You two are to ride in the same the same vehicle as the package. Unlike most of the general people here, your job is scout and tracking. If something is to go wrong, the job to retrieve, follow, or otherwise prevent it from getting out of hand or out of notice. He'll give a nod. The rest of you, Rabble, as I said, are guard duty, engineer duty. Keep it running, keep it going. I don't want any stops. I want this confirmation when I wake up in the morning. Are we all understood? And the general says, like, yeah, 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 if we're good. We know what we're doing. And she says, good. Anybody on guard duty, shuffle along. I need Bertram and Crystal to stay behind for a brief moment. people start shuffling off and when the room starts in she gestures for you two to come forward okay, uh, coming was... forward okay. nice to know. Like, even her eyes follow the same theme with the rest of her eyes are very vibrant purple with her like that and it just someone likes nice tattoos purple. and has money it's not 
Someone likes tattoos and has money. It's not too surprising. <laughs> Doesn't look like any tattoos on her. I have a purple ass. Those. Okay, so it's a case of slag poisoning then. <laughs> it could be. You Try not know. to judge it's him too much for it. Shit happens. <laughs> it is very vibrantly purple. I mean, I thought you meant like she had tattoos on her skin that you could see. And I'm like, nope, no tattoos there. No, I meant like if it was tattooed to look purple or like looked... No, not her like... eyes, like iris, are purple. Yeah. It's like, yeah, they've probably been poisoned. I'll just kind of not Don't, don't bring it that. up. It's not good for your job, right? Yeah. So, as with normal fractors and the scouts, do you have any particular questions or needs or requirements for this job? Or do you have all of your equipment needed and ready to go? You know what the terrain's gonna look like? Cityscape. We will be traveling amongst a lot of highways that we have paid to have mostly cleared. There shouldn't be hardly any traffic on them. There will be a few stragglers as we cannot completely shut them down, but it'll be mostly empty. Below and around, however, will be heavy urbanization as normal. Or Promethea. Understood. <clears throat> Are we expecting some sort of like hostile entity to attack us? If no, so, we don't have any do we know expected who? we don't have any expected enemies, interactions, or anything of the sorts. However, we do not get this far in this well by not being prepared. I guess it's just fine. I gotcha. Gotcha. That said, if something does occur, this is very important and very pertinent to your paychecks. Something to occur, the package is to be retrieved at all costs. Your fellow mercenaries, members, and co-workers are not any priority. The package is your priority. Let them take care of themselves. That's their job. But at any moment, you do not think the package is retrievable anymore. They better not, be, and if you make this choice, it very much better not be retrievable. It is better to see the package destroyed than in anybody else's hands. Do you understand? Destroy it if lost and seen. Okay. Armored case. Package will be very. It will be apparent once you arrive at the transport. Very well. Any other questions that you have for me? This is important. Do not hesitate to ask. This is an important job that you do not want to mess up. Very well, then. You are dismissed. Um. But... As you guys start to move away, as I assume you guys go to get ready, she says, wait a minute there. Crystal, was it? Yeah, that's, that's Have we met name. before? Have we met before? Have we met before? Uh, uh, you've seen her in public and probably been in, in a general like lobby area, but not ever personally. They're having a private moment. I'm just gonna go where I'm supposed to be. Okay, that's fair. You can keep going. He only she only stopped Crystal. I I don't believe so. Hmm. The I've seen you around, of course. It's kind of hard not to. Strange, strange. Maybe that'll be all. Get to your post. I'll just be on my way. As you walk out, she just seems distracted and just kind of like a couple times flicks off in the direction that you're walking. It looks... Make an insight check. Make an insight check on this. Funny one. She looks... 
interested and confused as to why there's interest. Like, not anything romantic or any of that jazz. Just something about you caught her, is catch, keeps catching her attention, and she seems confused as to why. Look I'll jump over to... Oh, go ahead. I'm just going to look down at myself, see what I'm just, you know, a piece of mint or a hair out of place. If anything looks off. Look about as put together as you normally do for a job. Uh, just strong and carry on. Hmm. Bertram, you get over to the waiting zone first. You're currently standing out towards the back. You're seeing a number of vehicles being prepared at the garage. And as you're sitting there waiting, you can't help but be drawn to one of the big digital screens they have projected. And just staring at it is, it looks to be like maybe the panel to a museum. Okay. All you're doing is it's just being staring at this symbol. It's, it's the circle with a bit of like an upside down V in it and a number of silhouettes in front of it. And you don't know why, but you just, your gaze is lingering. And your nerve, for, you do a lot of jobs like this. You don't know why, but your nerves aren't settled today. There's a tension building, and you can feel it. Okay. And it has nothing to do with the storm starting to build outside. <clears throat> Anything for you guys now? As you two join the room, Crystal. Just waiting. Just waiting. Go out there to find a package, I suppose. All right. Um, make a perception check if you're looking around for the package. It'd be nice to know what I'm guarding. 18. There's some things being loaded up, but all of it seems to be more like uh, extra gas in case something goes wrong, extra fuel in case something goes wrong ammo in case something goes really wrong things like that but you don't see anything that would fit the description of either a package or something of this severity but before long as it continues to the brain continues to pick up just a little bit uh you watch one of the head of ancient security areas like this branch head out uh you would know him as sergeant griffin he doesn't actually have the position of sergeant, but he insists on it, and he will make your life a living hell if you do not use it. Probably has something to do with his days in the police force. All right. Job starts now. It's time. Everybody load up. And he starts directing people, and he points uh, a number of guards and directs them over to a vehicle pulling in. There's a large, long, heavily armored transport bus. You too, as he points out to you, to both Crystal and Bertram, you're on there. Goes. And turns to go that way. Getting on, getting in. It just looks like a heavy transport bus with kind of in the middle a cage with a seat in it as well. And a number of normal, just basically seats around and going the length of it. All right, the package is on its way. It'll be here within the next minute or two. It is our job to make sure the package arrives uh, safely and on time. We do not expect any trouble. That said, if we have trouble, I expect all of you to do your part in this job. We're all being paid a hefty sum, and I expect that we get our money's worth. You too. You to take it easy. We'll be fine. As easy gestures to leave you. 
we and the boys got this. And you'll notice, Chris, that most of the people on this aren't the freelancers. This is the, like, these are the heavy hitters of your branch for guard duty. Oh. And a few minutes, uh, two minutes after he said, being walked in from a, another vehicle, bag over the head, hands cuffed together, feet kind of, you know, the cuffs they put on feet where they can shuffle, and that's about it, chain running back and forth. Uh, almost, you feel unhealthy, thin, like almost emaciated build. A little bit of like straight, long, tawny hair sticking out uh, from underneath the hood. Being shuffled in and then loaded and locked down and cuffed to the chair. And as he's up there, things get locked in, people get locked alone, and he says, All right, let's move. And the truss starts pulling out, and as the bus starts pulling out, the rain just starts a downpouring. And you guys set off for a drive. Are you guys doing anything particular as the drive starts? Not really. Sitting in the chair. <laughs> As you guys are driving, make a perception check for Crystal and perhaps Bertram as well, I'll think. Are you sure about that one? <laughs> yeah, I'll let it happen. It's not something you couldn't see. It just might be less you likely. want to bet six. <laughs> I said less likely. <laughs> No, you're distracted, you're walking around, you're looking around for any possible threats before you just settle in and start to maybe get some rest, because this will be a long drive. Crystal, what'd you get? A total of nine, ah. but it's a natural one. Ah. So. so, similar actually, <laughs> yeah. How how awake would you guys be right now? There's a heavy guard presence on here. There's literally maybe 20 other guards on this bus. Not asleep, but conserving energy. Okay. Crystal? You've been up I'm on a asleep. bench, or are you asleep, any? Not asleep, but somewhat distracted by this package that's in here. It's looking real bad, I suppose. If we can see it right Looking her over. Are you trying to just look her over or you get anything? No, just just looking at her. Looking at her. See if there's anything to make her special, I suppose. Make a... Um, I'll just make an insider perception again. To see if you can notice anything or read anything, pick anything up. No. What'd you get? Twelve. Twelve. <laughs> you think you hear like you the sound of somebody that's trying very hard not to cry. And that's only because you're decently close. <laughs> oh Wait. Yeah. As the night continues on and it starts to get later, like I said, you guys started in the evening. In the mid-afternoon, you joined up. This is taking place towards the evening. You guys are getting later in the night. Kind of like uh, keeping that conservative, like knocking, lulling you into a bit of a, not a sleep, but a, a numbing feeling. You know that where you just sit there and you kind of like, you're seeing everything, but you're not just exactly processing everything, maybe. Conserving energy. Yeah. Crystal? Is that somebody on the road? Is that a 
person. You guys are moving in pretty quick. That's a bit of a bright color. Is that a person? Why is there a person on the... And as you try to question that, you watch as the vehicles in front of you a little bit are um, just smashed as a very large glowing green ethereal arm brushes it. And you hear the shouting start, shouting start, people trying to get up at the ready, the brakes start screeching before a second arm races out and slams into the front, very front of this bus, and it goes ass over tea kettle. That would hit oh, me with you the character I had to play in the fucking <laughs> proof of <laughs> testing. Yeah, but now they're an NPC and I have a bit more ideas. I got a 15. Okay. What strength about or dex or strength and dex? Uh, strength or dex. What did you, what kind did you make, by the way? I I made mean, a dex save because I heard dex save would. If it's a strength save, then it's a 16. Because that's just yeah. You can step. make it says it's strength or dex. So 16 strength. Made a dex. I have a five. Okay. So Bertram, you didn't notice the person. However, it's really really hard to ignore a giant arm smashing a car and then punching the front of a bus yeah that's a son of and a bitch just brace. Reached over you just reached over grab the son of a bitch brace loop your arm in and hold tight and you land hard and upside down as the t roof just crunches in some and starts sliding you just start getting rocketed around but you don't take any damage you keep yourself situated it really you're gonna be really sore tomorrow crystal you rolled a five. You failed a DC 10 by five. Man, that's rough. Level um, one. Level one. <laughs> I know, but still, it's just the luck with you guys normally. You are launched into the cage, and you hear something crinkle and break before you splash into like where the asses started to melt through. As you see like corrosive effects on the front of it starting to melt through and you just bash out one of the windows and start skidding onto the highway and just into the concrete barrier. You take... Level one. Four damage. Level you take four one. damage. <laughs> you aren't moving as fast, you're already stopping. And um, as you hit the cage, it's good to know something in the cage broke between you and the other people being thrown what are you guys doing as the dust settles writing myself flicking out part of the cloak and grabbing my fucking shield <laughs> god knows what the hell's about to happen and increasing my try to write yourself and get your shield set up right you watch and you're awake enough to see and make a perception check for crystal Twenty-seven. You both see as the figure that was sitting in there chained up perks like tenses suddenly and perked. And now that you think about it, Crystal, she perked and tense suddenly before this went off. Mm. And chains fall limp and she's gone. But you're old of twenty-seven. You see on a nearby roof as a and just with the like slight flashes flickers into existence. What are you doing? Son of a bitch. Does anyone have eyes? I'm going to assume you two linked your echo nets, by the way, so you could talk to each other since you're part of the two. Yeah. On the fucking roof over. All right. I'd say I'd take a shot, but I actually don't know if it's going to die on me. You guys get up and start to ready yourselves to get in there. You look over, and there is just six large arms ripping the uh, buildings and knocking people around to the front, and that is making progress towards you quickly. You might want to get moving. Son of a get going. I'm <laughs> just fast. Do you have a better idea? Oh, no, uh, no, the building. Fine. 
the building they're on is not connected to the highway. That said, the roof is a little bit below the highway, and it's maybe 20 feet off, 20, 15 feet away. Uh, I don't know how jumping works. <laughs> Technically, there's a jumping distance and all that, but when something like this, it's more of I let you make an athletics or sometimes acrobatics check and just go for that. Cool, then. It's very hard to nitty gritty detail all your jumping distances. That's why I don't know how jumping works. <laughs> Are you guys going? Yes. It's better than that, and we're kind of it's supposed to. <laughs> um, as you guys are running by, I'll give it this to you, Thaddeus. As you guys are running to go jump, make your acrobatics or athletics checks in this case. I'll let either one slide. I don't let either one slide. You see, with a raging green arms around them spinning, a very tall, imposing, muscular woman. Blue jeans, combat boots, like ripped off sleeves, leather vest. Right now, her eyes and the... Uh, she has like two the sides of her head shaved and the a bit of like a mohawk down, down to a braid and there's traces of green running in it that are shining bright. And she's yelling with the fury with fury and pissed off rage as she's just tearing through and smacking people out. What you guys just checked is you're on a way to try and not get smacked by this. An 18. 18 that's really good you can make you just go and go and go and run jump hit hit the edge of it hit the go down on the crouch roll standing back up keeping your footing on a slick tarmac and roofing what about you crystal 11. make a deck <laughs> i still have my action can i help i will let you i'll give you advantage on the deck save with uh, Bertram spinning as you run and jump and as you kick off the concrete barrier that separates the uh, keeps the highway people on the highway from just going right over into a large abyss you hit it and your foot just kind of slides a bit on the slick and concrete and you're going to be falling just short make a deck save with advantage okay. because Bertram is helping huh 22 and as you're going oh you see Bertram just snap out and clap your forearm and you just <laughs> right into the building that's gonna hurt in the morning keep going and haul up as you guys start seeing and you see her you can realize now is a girl uh there's a bit of always a bit of a lighting in the city here because it's a city it's like many big cities that never truly sleeps there's always lighting you can see a little bit of now uh the like a decently tall maybe like five eight five to five ten range really long straight hair like large kind of like wire rim glasses and very thin and very unhealthy looking girl running doesn't even have shoes on right now or anything of the sort just prison clothes and is running Ooh. and now you can see as it's starting to fade a little bit from its glow of use on her hand you can start to see this and up on her shoulder like by her neck you can see like starting snaking swirls and this is a siren wait wait, wait is that a, is that a siren there wow but, but we had a fan girl a later siren? catch it now and she oh. runs and leaps off this into the building next to it and just through one of the windows I am very fast. I running know. Running athletic. But so is she. You guys are running. Make uh, make another set of athletics or acrobatics. I'm letting it be a bit more varied here, all given everything. I roll very good. Did you roll like last time? I rolled a 25 this time. Jesus Christ. I roll very good. What about you? <laughs> what about you, Crystal? 17 plus 5? Oh god, you guys she roll are... very good, <laughs> or technically yeah. he roll very good for her. Yeah, so yeah, the last one was a fluke. It was bad luck with that. Both of you are now on your feet, running. That's a siren. You're interested, and you both just take off, dead sprinting, leaping over the edge. As you see, as you guys land, you watch as she crashes through a doorway, and you see people like lights start flicking on in the apartment that she crashed into. 
I assume you're just gonna keep following. As she breaks out into the hallway, you just jump out in the end. Are you guys doing anything to try and catch? As you catch her in the hallway, she's still got a little bit before she hits what she seems to be going for the We're go, go, going, and if it looks like we have a clear area, I'm shooting to preferably take out a leg. Uh, I would like to make it... Are you going to try to keep shot. full print, um, full sprint, uh, full press the sprint still? If it looks like if I have to stop in order to do that, or it's going to be around, then he'll say it. no. But if I'll it looks like it's, running. oh, we can, fucking go for it. I'll let you do it while running. It'll just be at a penalty. Well, it's a disadvantage okay? anyway for called shot, so. Oh, that's true. Uh, but yeah, I'll let you do it you're running it with that penalty. All right. I'm going to have to try I have, I'm going to give her a slight bump to her AC to try to compensate for the called shot. And just like running headlong. Like she is moving. You see, like, little traces of energy leaking off of her still as she is just booking faster than a person should book. Okay, plus five to hit, disadvantage, double 15. You wing, roll damage All as right. you wing the side of her leg. Pistol, you're having a deal at d6. For seven. As you just, and you see blood, like, splatter off some as it hits. Uh, she stumbles a bit, it's just like, oh! A cry, a pain, and you're realizing that's a very young voice. That is a very young voice. But it doesn't stop her as she keeps running. And it is good to know that when it hit her, it, like I said, hit the leg and sprayed blood, there is nothing protective on this girl like what you guys have. Busting inside, um, starting up the stairs. As you guys bust in, uh, make a perception check. You don't see her immediately. She could go up or she could go down, and you don't know where. I don't see anything. My eyes are blind. They cannot see. Adjusting to the rapid lights of pain. Fifteen. You see a slight flash above you, and hear as the door shuts. About two stories up. Just leaving Bertram up, up the stairs. Here you go. Go, go, go. As you guys are rushing, feet pounding up the stairs. You're starting to hear things wake up as she is not being quiet. She's making a lot of slamming noises. It's late at night. As you burst up into the next room, start running out of the hallway, there's actually a couple people starting to come down as she's running through. Heavily, like, breathing heavy. Uh, they might have heard some of the other stuff earlier. As she's running by, she's going to see you guys. She's going to grab all the fire alarms and set it off. There was a window at the end of the hallway. It seems like she's going to be running towards. You guys have another brief moment of a straightaway here. Pew. <laughs> and people are starting to file out into the halls. I'm shooting again. I'm not putting a shot at the I'm assuming no. still disadvantage and then an additional yes. blah, 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 yes. blah. Yes. This yes. time it's so not as good. It's double like... 12, so 70. <laughs> uh, you Byron. <laughs> And it just things into the wall next to her, like right by her ear almost. And she like cringes and ducks some, but it just still hits the wall. Hey, I think you said Crystal was taking a shot. Yeah, Crystal will take a shot. 14. Uh, also, just right between her feet on the floor. She's again, jumps a little bit as it hits near her. And as she's making it to the end of the hallway, she throws herself at the window and then just <laughs> flickers out. Window shatters from energy release, it seems like, but she did not hit the window. She just, <laughs> and you see her appear on a roof. What's her distance? They are getting slowly farther away. What's the distance, though? Does it look like we might survive right if we try? <laughs> Did you make the jump? It's really hard to tell from this. You're not going to have time to take a look. I have to ask, are you taking the leap of faith? Right, so I don't like it, but I am going to get out my melee weapon to attempt to fucking claw myself into the side of the building or the roof. <laughs> it's going to be, you have, like I said, it's going to be hard to tell. It's somewhat dark out. It's dark outside. It's light in here. It's that, you know, vision shifting. You're running quick. There's people in the way. It will just be a leap of faith. Can I have faith it? in the war pick. <laughs> okay. Are you both going for it? I'll take that like athletics shot. or acrobatics. Hey, 
athletics check you plus six that's a uh, 23 crystal um, 18 all right as you guys are running you both just hit the go and feet pounding just like shoulder checking through people bird trip you're clearing a pretty quick path you're like you said a decently large muscular dude when you're moving and serious, people just try to get the fuck out of the That's way. That's a fucking shield in front of him, so he can brush us aside yeah. more easily. <laughs> yeah, like, you are a sight, you are charging, they're like, no, what the- oh, fuck, as they throw themselves against the walls, you're just barreling through, and eat. Crystal, you're just slipping in behind this. You both make a running leap, and you realize, oh, shit, it's like once, it's just like a, a little bit above where you guys are, and you just slam into the wall. You immediately just take your war pick and bury it, like, maybe only a foot from the roof lip, but you're right there. Crystal, you barely can't, you run and jump, and oh, you're not gonna hit it, you're gonna get hit. You just look, 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 and just see a pipe. You just snake out and slam into the wall as you grab the pipe. You guys start hauling yourself up over the edge. And this is a longer roof. You can see her trying to duck between some stuff as she runs. I want you both to actually try to make uh, acrobatics or athletics. There's a lot of that for chases, you know? At least I got if one of them. Different, if you didn't have, if you have a different skill you would like to suggest, you are welcome to, as you're trying to quickly navigate this roof uh, with a number of obstacles and things on it like she's going through. Well, let's see here. I'm level one. I don't have my class abilities. <laughs> I have mobile. <laughs> uh, you don't have difficult terrain so with your dashing, so you will be moving quicker. Yep. That'll help you. I'll let you say you have an advantage on this check you're sure. making. Sure. Fast as fuck, yo. That said, if you guys have a different skill you Ooh. want to suggest, you're welcome to. I'm fine with running. <laughs> I need it nice. A critical run. Running is getting things done. Oh, shit. Well, what are you doing for Crystal? Crystal's making the acrobatic set. Alright, what's she yeah. making? How is she doing? 23. 23. Both of you guys are sprinting. Running, running, running. There's a pipe. Vault it. There is a, like, a unit coming up out of the ground. Just jump, hit, slide, hit to your feet as you go again. One of you, uh... Bertram, you're, this is your element, you realize, just pounding along, hunting, tracking. That is what you are. And you're just, you're feeling it, the movement, the blood sinking, but for some reason you can't get those nerves out. And you just slide, hit the ground, and like baseball slide underneath it off a raise, bit of piping, pop right back up, you're chasing. You burst through the smog as you see her at the edge of the building, like not right on the edge, somewhat, somewhat close, looking around, kind of panicked as you just burst out of this fog foggy covering with crystal right behind you you're taking a bit more of like a flippy going over trying to avoid and build up momentum whereas bertram's just powering along with those like longer heavily muscular muscular legs what are you doing bertram you have the lead she is right there maybe like 10 feet away and you have a lot of momentum built going for a tackle make an athletics check sure 19 Well, she rolled an 18. Um, as she churns, you see her eyes widen in panic. And now that you're really close, you see her hair has streaks of white in it, and her eyes are also like flaked heavy with like a whitish blue, bright whitish blue. As they widen in fear, and she, you just barrel into her as they try to like panically, like, no, 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 and try to get out of the way. And you both hit the deck and just roll and slam into the, the uh, slightly upraised bit for the roof. Crystal, you're coming in close. What are you guys doing? She's like, no, 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 no. I can't come back. No, I won't. I won't come back. And she elbows you in the gut, by the way. Doesn't get through anything. What are you doing, Crystal? You get one thing Stop before down. we start rolling initiative here. Stop Have running or I am going to have to kill you. <laughs> What'd you say for Crystal? I said going to try to tap her. I don't know, for strainer a little bit. Try to Stop help with what's moving. happening here? Yep. Well, to be fair, Bertram already has her tackled and held.
If you, if you don't have anything extra to add there, we're just going to have to go to, we're going to move to initiative. Yeah, I don't have anything. Okay. We're moving to initiative. You guys roll. Very well. I think it's an 11, because he theoretically gave peace a chance, even if it was a horrifically not at all in your favor, don't actually accept this type of chance. <laughs> What did you get, uh, Thaddeus? As 12. Well, okay. um, she's going yeah. first with a... Yeah, I number. Twelve is Crystal, and eleven is Bertram. Now that you guys are here noticing, you heard the younger voice earlier, you saw the smaller stature. You guys can get a good view now with a little bit of the light hanging out uh, from a number of signs, street lights on the highways passing nearby. Uh, you guys realize you're still decently close to where there's still that fight raging on. And both of you have high enough passive. You can't miss this. This is... This is a teenager. He's maybe 16, 17... And she is terrified and thrashing. She's just screaming, no, 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 I can't go back. I won't. No, I can't go back in there. Why are you helping them? And she's trying to break out. I would like you to roll another athletics check for Bertram. Oh, no, big strong guy. I'm going to have to be big and strong here. Oh, look at that. He's, he's a natural one because I suck. Oh, oh, no, I thought you were going to keep her. Oh, shit. It's there providing help, kind of. You, know, is, you, she's trying to do this. You try to keep a uh, grip on her. She like wedges, gets an elbow, and she just watch as her arm starts to glow a little bit, and she just wham, and a heavy force just bashes you in the nose, and you just, like stumble out of it and let go, and she just springs up and tries to start running again. Attack of opportunity. Yep. War pick to the fucking leg. Disadvantage. Uh, wait. Yo. Wait. No, she is disengaging. Rude. That's very rude is what you've done to me. I'm sorry. I just, I'm trying to do what she's doing. And I'm like, yeah, that makes sense. So I'm like, no, she took the disengage. All right, never mind then. And she's starting to run towards uh, the other side of the roof. She can't go back the way she is because you're still in the way, Crystal, and she doesn't want to go close to you. She's running towards a different corner of the roof. And... At the very that's least, they're probably a half movement. <laughs> hmm. uh, I just had you guys doing that for flavor. I was just doing it normal. Yeah, we're standing. Okay, cool. Yeah, you're still that means I'm still standing. fast. I just did fuck. that for flavor. <laughs> yeah, you guys are going fast. <clears throat> that was mostly for flavor, and you guys, you guys were scrambling to your feet as this happens at the start of initiative. I'm not. It won't penalize you either. Uh, she got 45 feet away. And that's all she can do this round, and she's just panicking and trying to look for a way out. What do you, Crystal? You're up next. It's a range on these, you know, pistols. Enough. Enough. Uh, fifty-two hundred. Yeah. Ma, just stop running. I don't want to shoot you. So I'll prepare my action to shoot her. You run a bit closer. Move closer, prepare your action. You're moving your full 30 feet? Yeah. Uh, as you shout at her, stop running, I don't want to shoot you. She's going to turn back to you and just scream back at you. It's like, I can't go back. No, I won't go back in those labs. I, and she's like panicking, trying to look at it. It's like, I can't, I, I can't do it anymore. And she's still looking very apparently looking like she's trying to escape, but she can't go anywhere just yet. Bertram. I move my 40 feet. Move 40 feet. You are right in front of her. Right. Because of that. And now the goal is to be non-lethal. This one's breakable. But... 
Pick attack, shield attack. Oh yeah, action bonus action, huh? Yes. Alrighty. Pick go. Pick is a lot. 19. Bad hits. For a d8, which is stored over here. For 9 damage. Ouch. Shield go. Which is also plus 6 for a 21. For a cube of Dan Bleach of nine. That hurts, man. Um, what? Shrugs and it's a shield with a fucking spike on it. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> it's meant for you, driving. Like, she's like, it was just finishing talking to you, Crystal, when Bertram just blitzes in full speed and starts op opening up like throws the pick wide as he comes in and she leans back and it just like runs the edge of the pick along like her uh, clavicle and shoulder some like well the back end's blood. blunt <laughs> oh okay i was just seeing that bit using the back end <laughs> you can see it still hit and it just like hits and, like leaves like an ugly red mark is just clink, and slides along before just leaning <clears> in and basically shoulder checking her with a shield and she stumbles back suddenly looking immediately more panicked than she was before and just worry it's just a kid you know and that's just the corporation that really wants this one way or another um as you slam into her And hit her, and she's trying to fight around, and you just watch her, she just screams at the top of her lung for Petra! Petra! At the top of her lungs, as she's as loud as she can, and it might be hard to hear over the rainstorm, and I'm a check. Okay. I need to roll something else. Okay. And it comes back around to her turn. She is going to attack. You burst your images, you just fucking hey, person, what the hell into action. her. <laughs> fucking do something. If he chooses to, he's allowed to. Uh, he, she is going to attack you twice. Actually, she's going to attack you three times. I'm However, my Oops. you said if she tried to escape, I think. Yeah. That's right now, Bertram just slammed into her immediately for attacking, and she seems to be retaliating. You can already see bruise, like a heavy, like bloodied bruise forming where the back end of the war pick hit her. That said, uh, that's a 13 and a 16 so far to hit. Gets through. Uh, that's the 16 on the die. So that's two hits at you. You take what's your modifier? That you take seven damage on the first hit, seven force damage on the first hit as her hand starts to glow, and and you take five on the second one as she follows it up with a knee slamming into you. Shields down, looking rough. A. Hey. <laughs> The NA carries the kind of got her in a quarter. She's not sure she can run very well. Um, you guys got a 12 next for Crystal. Damn, you guys really. Yeah. Um, Crystal. You got really good eyes. Both of you need to make a deck save as you see something large and heavy just through the air towards you guys on the building. 22. 22. Nineteen. Nineteen. Really good. I'm glad you guys rolled high. You both take two damage as you flip from debris and shit. As you see, hey fuck, that's the boss. And all of you throw yourselves out of the way of it, and you guys hit the ground and hit, you guys eat, hit the ground, and start rolling away and lose sight of the girl in front of you for a moment. For the moment. 
like running, but long it enough. It is like you guys hit the thing. So, um, you guys uh, hit the deck, try to roll all the way. The shards from like the building or throw up and hit you, and it just <laughs> skids in, and then just the other piece swings as it hits and slams into one of the buildings next to it. Add a shield, more than bloody. Were we running for long enough for my shield to regenerate from, what? you know, the initial crash of the um, transport? You guys have been running for a moment. High impact. I'm going to roll a d10 for this one. I mean, d20. D20 if it's uh, 10 or lower, no. 11 or higher, yes. Yes, it has. That. Okay. Yep. That's it, it's Crystal's turn. Oh, well, it's already started. That was Taking a whole a last transport bus that just got launched at you. Don't see anything in that direction? Uh, that was the highway it came from, where the giant glowing arms are currently now red, and also tearing into things still. Although it looks like there's not much resistance left up there. Although you do hear siren in the distance, as it looks like uh, the police force are trying to respond. And you cannot currently see the, the you cannot currently see the siren. So. Taking a shot at the one in front of me. No, you can't currently see her. The, the bus one... is between you guys. Oh, the bus. I thought you were talking about the other side. The siren that threw the you guys, bus. Yeah, you guys just like, came up rolling. There's dust going up around. And you cannot currently see the siren. I look around That's, for her. I will let you make a perception check for... Yeah. Just to make a perception check on this one. 16. 16. Uh, you're starting to see her. She's clambering. She's, she's using the movement from her shirt. She's clambering up the bus and running towards the next building. One. Between the bus and the that, she's maybe 70 feet off. And two, can I take a shot at her? Or did you I already can't take a shot at her. Because she has started running. As she's clambering up and getting ready to like get off this to the next one. Will sixteen hit? Uh, sixteen does not hit. As you and it sixteen hits next to her, she like skids a little bit to the side on the wet like downpour of rain on metal, making it very slick. And she almost skids and falls a little bit. Bertram, what are you doing? Going out. <laughs> giving where uh, Crystal just shot. You can at least you can see where uh, the siren is. Ugh. Okay. Far away are they? About seventy feet. All right, that's 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 fucking. They're awesome. fast as fuck, boy. Okay. Trying to shield myself from future buses. Can I move alongside? Buses were not on the list of things. <laughs> the buses were not on the list of weapons you were to be equipped to deal with. No duh, Sherlock. What are you doing though? Trying to shield myself from future buses if they are be trying to move alongside and if I have a shot doing She's so. Gone. You can see her, but she is going up the bus. Like the bus hit and then spun, like I said, the angle and slammed into the building next, like nearly into the building next. So it looks like she's trying to use that to make a jump to a different building. Okay. What would you like to Fuck do? Fuck her. Hold my action. Shoot. As soon as she jumps or goes to jump, taking the shot. All right. That comes back around to her. Uh, like I said, she's making a jump. Make a shot. Pow. Disadvantage because it's outside the range distance. The range. However, double 17 says, fuck it. Double yeah, dice. That'll hit. that'll hit. Um, roll some damage, and I'm going to roll a deck save for her to see if she can recover midair. Allie! The bullet's angry. That's... 
Nine damage. She's looking rough. All right, deck save. Oh shit! <laughs> as she runs the goes like goes to make the jump, she has like you, you know like that last second as you're pushing off with the back of your leg. You only have one on there, the other is stretching out to make it, and as she goes to push off, the bullet hits her leg, and she like gives some, and she goes flying across towards the building she was, and she just right into the wall slams hard you hear like oh you hear the crunch and as she starts to fall she starts to like try to f uh, flick her out and you just see hard an alleyway down below just smashes into the ground you hear like clang as she maybe it's like a trash can or something on the way maybe a dumpster i'm going inside and i'm taking the stairs yeah that was rough you can make a safe estimation that moving quick ain't gonna be uh, much of a thing there our say initiative's over for the moment. Well, so we have to go and look down at her, see how she's doing. Make a perception check. Ten. You cannot see her from here. Let's see where she fell. And is there anything I can find? You guys down? saw the alleyway. You guys saw the, saw the alleyway no, she alleyway. fell into. I'm sorry, you, you just asked if that check on her from there. You're still on the roof, just okay. getting ready to walk down. That's why you can't see much of anything. Okay. Guys, just proceeding down into her? You wouldn't happen to have a health thing, would you? Is that a no? Awesome. If I to it, I would take that. Uh, um, you work at Anshin. Roll, roll me a d20. Depending on what you get, I may give you a health file. Have to two. You do not have a health file. I have lots of twos tonight. <sighs> yeah, no. Um, ain't got one. Sorry. Well, that's great. You're fresh out. Last job cleaned you out, and you haven't had time to restock yet. I expect this to be a simple mission. I can go restock after. You expect it to be a simple? Yeah, sure. That's why they didn't tell you what was happening up front. Way overpaid you, and had people sitting inside of an armored caravan that was guarded. You did not I get your paycheck. I was going to get paid for this. You did not I get a paycheck of amount yet. Yeah. Okay like, then. Sure you, can pay for you... This. You get paid a retainer to be on ready for this kind of shit. You don't get a pay for job. If you didn't know, then I can tell you. It was inflated. Inflated how much? Inflated like a couple hundred? A thousand or two? Yeah, it's significantly more than normal escort normally pays. I'm probably gonna go kick my friend in the teeth. Hey, he told you it was way over, over what it should be for something like this. Don't you back talk me, boys in me head. <laughs> no rationality allowed here. Alright, you guys make your way down. No, uh, there's nothing you were warned, and also that fucking sucked, and I'm going, I'm going to blame you a little bit for it. <laughs> That's fair. Uh, you guys make your way down through the hotel. Uh, it's mostly emptied out as fire alarm. People got the fuck out. As you get at the bottom, you see the cops starting to pull around, and you guys get rushed out of the way. I assume you probably shake them off real quick, because they're like trying to move you out of the way get you checked out yeah. it's not gonna be hard you guys are very scary it's fine traffic accident <laughs> flash my you get the look, at you get the look something. a fucking disbelief of how in the hell did you and then he just stops as soon as the bad flash is like ah, 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 okay and back that backs up and lets you go As you guys make it to the uh, alleyway, you see like a hit, and you see bleeding, a decent bit of bleeding now, of where she was, and you see a trail, and you see she's currently had just drug herself to the end of the alleyway, and leaning up against it with a leg that looks like it's busted up and broken, and an arm not bending quite right. I fulfill my contractual and duties, heavily. and I trek. They're there. <laughs> Job. Congratulations. Look, 
Stop you can running. take point. Just, I'm just gonna breathing stand heavy. Here. Just breathing heavy as you approach and just Why? 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 Just wanna get out. Just wanna go. No, I really wanna I let just it wanna go. go live home. Just wanna go live. Why do you work for these people? Why do you do this? You can look at her now, like one of the glasses is shattered in the frame. She's bleeding heavy from like a nosebleed, probably from hitting the wall. Her face is like scruffed from the uh, the concrete burn. What are you doing? I'm letting her move forward because I feel kind of fucked right now. <laughs> That's fair. You are hurting. Like, I said that I'm still watching shit. It doesn't matter if the bus hit me. She hit me like a goddamn truck. Oh, yeah. It hurts. You might have a rib busted right now. What are you doing, Crystal? You're maybe five feet away, ten feet away. I'm forward trying to suppose to cure her. It's just, it's my job, you know. It's just your job. What just I your job to throw do. teenagers back in a fucking mental lab. Mental lab? What? No, what? Ah, I suppose that's where I'm thinking of. Look where you work. She can't move right now. She can't run. I'm assuming I have some sort of rope or rope equivalent on her, on me. I can just use to tie her up. Okay. I'll say you yeah, have basically a set, a basic set of restraints. That said, using restraints on her would be significantly worsening of her injuries right now. She, she, like I said, one of her legs is obviously broken. One of her arms is not moving right. She, she can't do much right now. Oh, can you just, just let me go just, home, please? Stop this thing. I'll see if it's patched up or something. I, I, can't go, I don't want to go back. can't go back in. I can't take it anymore. I just want to go home. Please. And she is begging right now, as that is her only option. I don't want to go back. I don't want to do any more tests. I don't want to do any more trials. I just want to go. I don't know what to do here. Uh, what's the... You don't know the protocol? I don't know the protocol. What? Get you them know restrained. What protocol states. You know what protocol Get them where state. they need to be and hidden from whatever the fuck's happening over there. Protocol states, secure the package. Moral state, let her go. Do not do it. Are you like muttering? Yes. I'm, I'm you hear, thinking. as you're muttering this out loud, if you don't notice this, uh, you're distracted. Bertram, you hear a rain start, you hit an umbrella and some like footsteps around the corner. Can I peek and see whom? <laughs> Walking down the road, not very far off, a very familiar lady in a suit. Uh, make a perception check, actually, real quick, too. Sure. There's some lighting here so you can see some details. Perceptions plus two, that's a 50. Not quite. Okay. Seems to be walking down the road. Bodyguard is nowhere in sight. Although with 
crystal muttering in the background, you notice as she like tilts her head to hear something. And then eyes just slowly Wait, shift to the alleyway. What are you doing, Crystal? She's just Throw sitting there. Grab a hold tears. of her. Restrain her in, you know, without exasperating her injuries. Uh, restrain her? No, no, if you try to restrain her, if you try to hold her down, do anything, it's going to make it worse. It's like I said, she's she's messed up. She just fell several stories. Essentially, I can't touch her. Can't she's only her not without, dead because no. of last minute use of powers to try and negate things, it seems like. I, I, I let gravity decide this. <laughs> yeah. Trying to figure out doing? how to collect her without, you know, click, doing click, any more harm click, to her. Click, 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 click. And now you notice it too. And Bertram, she's just walking in at the end of the alleyway, currently as Murmur. Do a wave that says, oh, hi, hello there, nice happy. to see you. I got hit by a bus and then put my arm down. <laughs> Not currently addressing you and just walks a little bit past you. What seems to be happening here? Hey, Natalia. And she looks down at the kid. And, hey, Natalia. And the whimpering, and like she actually starts to try to scrabble and get away from her. Even with her arm and leg like, as fucked as it is. Why'd you have to run? Siren. It was need to know information that you did not need to know. Now why did you try to run? You've gone and done this to yourself. Such a waste. And you watch as she pulls a gun out and just fires three shots into the person's like into the abdomen chest area of Natalia as she addressed her. What? She cannot fulfill the need anymore. She cannot fulfill what we need of her anymore. In fairness, She's if you had let her go, I was about to toss a fucking dagger at her. She's just collateral at this point. Dispose of the body. And she turns around to start to walk away. Are you doing anything? Uh, it is to know. Natalia is still breathing heavy, but like labored. She's dying. She's still breathing. You wouldn't happen to have a healing vial on you, would you? <laughs> Stops. Literal bus. Looks at you. Make a persuasion check. <laughs> <laughs> persuasion. Uh, 19. Good work with the tracking, and she hands you a healing vial. Thumbs up. Next time, try to find them in better condition. Try. Heal. It's a 2d4 plus 2. Okay, cool. What are you doing there? She's still breathing and very, like, bleeding out on the ground. Yeah, and you have been told to dispose of the body, Crystal. Oh, this one wasn't dead. That's fucking awesome. It was sugar. <laughs> How much did you heal? Like body bags on one, one something. plus two. <laughs> you don't you know. You, you didn't come prepared to dispose of a body. That said, this is a girl, a teenage girl who just got shot three times and is bleeding right. out. She is dying. What do you Better do? Now. Really? I don't think I have anything that can you know stabilize it. Moving toward and this mess over there. She's just slumped up against the wall. Okay. Sorry, kid. Just gonna put her out of her misery, I suppose. I hand you a knife. <laughs> the cops are getting closer. A gunshot would draw attention. 
Those are you some knives. Fatal throat, stab her in the head, one way or another, something. As you walk forward, basic training starts to take over. And you move it to just slip it between the ribs. And she's just staring mm-hmm. at you. Staring through you and like just you are almost frozen in the icy the icy look you are getting. And as you start to get in, you're kinda like hesitating a little bit, like a bit slower than you normally would. There's a bit of a shake. Bertram, you see this. And as it starts to go in, she just the good, good arm just snaps out and snatches like a very deathly grip on your arm and you feel like everything starts to get cold. Like right there where she grabs on your hand on your arm starts to get really cold real quick. Okay, the immediate reaction is I don't like and what that's happening there and I'm gonna war pick her. <laughs> hold on. You're you're right there. You're back just a step, you said. He's right there. Hold on just a sec. And she As you get you this is happening as you get your war pick ready, just so you know. Leans in and pulls it close. And just says Remember what else? Just remember Run. Always. Run. Stab. <laughs> and just slumps into the wall. And you go to pull the knife out, and as you go to pull it out, the hand doesn't let go at first. Thank and you. as you try to move and just tangle yourself from it, you watch as the tattoo starts to spark in light again and the cold starts to seep up your arm and you're sitting there staring at this you watch as whatever sleeve you had on there starts to just freeze and brittly break and fall off and crawling up from the hand in your arm you watch as swirls and emblems start to just creep up each one feels like a numbing cold but nothing painful seeping in it just goes up your arm crawling up around your shoulder and then hitting your neck and down as you see it like a couple spots in your shirt start to on the side start to freeze and break down right through there and bertram you watch as this is happening and then for crystal and suddenly as the hand just kind of lets off and finishes slumping things start to just look her in Blow. The rain just starts coming down, but now you can actually see it's not just a streak of rain, it's drops, everything starts to slow down real is whatever this is starts burning brighter and brighter on your arm. Bertram. You've you gotta watch be as this is this happening is the to worst Crystal day and she's starting ever. to flicker as she's starting to uh like as it's seeping up, starting to flicker almost like in and out, like almost like rapid steps of what the siren was doing before. You what? take, make a con save, by the way. Yeah, cool. I actually have a save that I'm proficient in. Never mind. She has a save. She's proficient. In. 16. Okay, you still take 10 damage as the energy is overloading and transferring and whatever is happening is you're vibrating back and forth before suddenly everything snaps back to where you're and just hit the ground gasping hard what 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 just hmm what's that perhaps i spoke too soon on you making a mistake And you see at the end of the alleyway, still there as she was leaving. And now it stopped, it's murmur still. How would you like a promotion to a higher facility as she starts to walk towards you? Um, we may be a logical one, boss, because I can assume I'm aware of what she's talking about. Um. I hope I'm, I'm satisfied where I am. Oh, I think I must insist, and I think me and my allies must insist. Don't you, boys? And walking out, 
from back around the corner, you now see one of the gu the guard that was there before, and one of the other ones, and somebody else, a similar build, a bit uh, more hair on the head, bit of a goatee, and you see as she's palming the handle, uh, the whole the handle of her pistol that's in its holster. Trying to do it subtly, but you're very perceptive. I'm afraid I must insist so very much. I'm running away. Running such a blessing. Is that your first thought? Run. Yep. Just, just run. Bertram is you right die. there. I have to ask, what do you do? I'm kind of fucked up, but I would like to say help. <laughs> <laughs> I think his response. Um, I'm going to make you roll an insight just to say you've been in, you've seen these shittiest Ash situations before. Ooh, you might be collateral right now. Oh, look at that. With their extra fucking whatever the hell. They didn't come here alone. They're with a kill squad. They're the second in command of a major corporation. Why would they ever be alone? Chances of us. Escaping, especially with me not doing great, is low to minimal. My best chance right now is additional mercenary work from the bigger thing. But that doesn't answer my question. What are you doing, Crystal? Running. Okay. What are you doing there's about two Bertram? Sides of the alleyway, so. I was judging. Oh, no, but there's not two sides of this alleyway. That's what I said. You guys went to the end of this. This is oh. a wall. Oh. I thought it opened out into another. Oh, this was a dead end. No, this was a dead end. That's why she was up against the wall here. Kill squad. You jump down the window. I can't climb up. Can I climb up? Or is there a place I can climb? I'm looking around for it. Just, I'm about. just asking you a question. Are you take are are you trying to get Bertram to move? That's that's what I'm trying to ask you right now. In my way? Then yes. No, are you trying to get Bertram to move? You know what this situation is. You've been on these mm -hmm. cleanup things before. This is a collateral situation. Bertram's probably going to be gone. Like I I'm misunderstanding what you were trying to say. No, like I was saying, you understand the situation is they're trying to come for you. I'm not, they're not even disguising it. You know, Anshin has practices. Yeah. Bertram's not needed for whatever seems she seems to be intending for you, and you know what that means for people who know too much. That's why I'm asking, what are your intentions with Bertram as you have the idea run? I mean, do you want so. to help save them? Do you want I mean, to use them as a decoy? Maybe. Do what? Step up these and he would be, you know, gotten dead. rid of for not Most likely it. dead. Most likely dead. What are you doing? He has shown himself to be competent. <laughs> if you he want to know. Very fucking competent. <laughs> I am not very smart. So, I would... You also suppose... have been in this job for a long time, so you can use some logical reasoning. And I know you have a good wisdom for that as well. Yes, I do. What are you doing? That's, all I, that's a simple I question. I would use him Try to take him with me to, I don't know, distract them later on. You want to take him? Yes, I do. You reach out, Bertram, as you're backing up. You're getting your shield ready. It's like, well... All right, here we go again. <laughs> and then you feel a hand grab, like, the crook of your elbow. As, Crystal, you're moving almost on instinct now. You're not sure what it is, but you grab Bertram and you actually start running at them for whatever reason. Like, that's your way out. And as you run at them and you watch as they start to all raise a gun and start to aim up a shot, you... What does Bertram think of? I mean, not what does Bertram. What is Crystal's thought right now? What place would come to her mind right now? Immediately, her apartment. Okay. 
Both of you make con saves. Ah. <laughs> 16. Eight. <laughs> right. You take... Fuck. I healed uh, nothing, Matt. <laughs> damaged for Down. Crystal. No, Crystal Down. takes nine damage. You take two. Because I rolled that with two ones on your shit. Jesus Christ. Oh, me take two? Yes, good. Yeah, um, as you guys reappear, you just flicker and... Crystal? Does it go to my shield or my what you're doing, hit points? It's, it's your shield first. Okay. I don't know if you have your shield. Yeah, your shield would have come back on the walk down. Yeah. Not I'm just treating it as an encounter power, so whenever we're not in an encounter, it's unless another one happens, I'm assuming it's back up. And yeah, fair. And as you reappear, as you just you're gone. You get the feeling, crystal, of freedom. You've never felt like your steps have never been lighter, your strides longer. The route's so endless. As everything starts to warp and elongate around you. Bertram! <laughs> the world blurs, and you just feel friction burning at you tearing at you ah. <laughs> as you just and as you slam into your you know apartment you're coming to wear crystal this is your apartment right now both of you just crash heavy into it lights are out what are you doing yeah uh. Uh, orienting myself, just, just fit. Going off here. All right. Taking inventory. Uh, Siren died. You got tats now. And then we're somewhere else. And they saw me leave with you. So now I'm an accomplice. Awesome. That sounds like you just buried your head, your hands in your face with that noise, no? Perfect. He says you lift your hands up, starting at the tip, and you see running down kind of like in veins. <laughs> no, no, shake, shake. Is a, a bright blue. It's not coming off. Uselessly trying to just shake it off. It's not coming off. It's like a bright, uh, uh, you know, ish blue. Sky ish blue. It's just seeped into your fingertips, and you watch as it's like just slowly crawling down your fingers and spreading out towards yeah. the back. Of you. <laughs> and the veins are starting out towards the back of your hand and on your palm. Immediate just strip of cloth, probably from like her nearby chair or like a favorite clothy poster that she had. Sorry. And Rip, tear, turn it. Crunch <laughs> in your hand is that vial from uh, the ancient vial for your health. You realize that it was still in your shit and you clenched and it just shattered. Ow, and you ow, see pieces ow. of it in your arm that aren't cut into it, but they're in it still. Son of a... And uh, if Crystal I said you started to move, it sounded like. No? Yep. You feel pain as you look down, and inside, again, like a bit of your palm there now, as you start to move her, and in like your thigh, you see other remnants of the vial also kind of not cutting in, but fused in. Where's the needle? <laughs> uh, the needle currently looks like it might be partially buried in your forearm. Ooh. <clears throat> oh my god. I'll just be trying to pull the shards of da, 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 no, 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 no. <clears throat> Those are inside. <laughs> They're inside. I'll just be scratching at them. <clears throat> yes. Alright. That thing I just said. 
I'm assuming this is your apartment. <laughs> Unless you just randomly were wanting to go to a different apartment. Or we're in some random apartment. I actually know you screamed about collectibles. This is your apartment. I just shoot you the random photo of myself. I have a couple on of them smashed. I have a couple collectibles smashed. Yeah, how many how much these cost? Doesn't matter. This place is burned. I suppose you can try to grab whatever it is you care about the most. It's time to go. Probably get the fuck off world if we can with what we have saved up. Cause like it or not, it seems we're in this together now since you grabbed me. Nice to meet you, partner. <laughs> right. Oh. Sounds like ends with nice to story, meet you, man. partner. Don't touch Crystal my hands. Crystal goes unconscious. Up, you're down. <laughs> and into the ground. Okay, awesome. Right. And that is what we're going to call tonight. Bertram goes into the other room and tries to find your suitcase. <laughs> I figured, as you're starting to pack up with an unconscious, Chris, an unconscious crystal in her room, you're just grabbing random stuff. We're calling it for the night. Okay. Well, a kid. How dare you? And that was our first session zero for this. There should be more, which Hopefully I just we'll realized have... I have to awkwardly attend and just lurk in the background doing. Yep. <laughs> <Okay>. yep. <Burner. laughs> um, we will hopefully be doing some more spattering over the next bit of time. It'll be a little bit because I do have Star Wars to finish for them, but we figured we'd get a footstep in, uh, a foot in the door, as it were, and start on it. Give me a little bit more time to plan stuff for people. Give people a something to work from and a guaranteed, oh, that's real, to look at. Give you the idea that this is, you know, the sign of this is setting. It ain't your normal D and D. This is Borderlands. Let's do some crazy stuff. Well, thank you, everybody, for watching and joining us here. Alrighty. Goodbye.